When the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam came, what was he called? What was he called among his people? What was his title? As Sadiq Al Amin. Everybody knows that. Sadiq from Sidq. He was truthful. Amin, trustworthy. You can trust him. No one disputed that. The kuffar and everybody there, regardless of their tribe, regardless of their background, there was no difference of opinion among the kuffar that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was what a sadiq al amin. And all of a sudden, he starts calling them to tawheed, and things change. He becomes waqal al kafirun hada sahirun kathab. Auzu billah. And the disbeliever said, this is a magician, a lying magician. Kathab is different than kathib. Kathib is someone who may lie. Kathab, this is his quality. Now look, a sadiq became kathab, a liar. أَجَعَلَ الْآلِهَةَ إِلَاهًا وَاحِدًا هَذَا لَشَيْءٌ عُجَابٌ Now listen to this, the crazy stuff. Crazy stuff human beings say. He made the gods one god? This is amazing. This is a curious thing. How, how could the many gods become one god? As if, as if we were created with the natural disposition of believing in multiple gods. And Tawheed suddenly came. It's the other way around. We were born with worshipping Allah alone. Then Shirk came. They said, this is something amazing. إِنَّهُمْ كَانُوا إِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ يَسْتَكْبِرُونَ وَيَقُولُونَ أَإِنَّا لَتَارِكُوا آلِهَتِنَا لِشَاعِرٍ مَجْنُونَ Allah described their affair. They used to be whenever it was said to them, there is no God worthy of worship but Allah. يَسْتَكْبِرُونَ They would act arrogantly. They were prideful. And then they say, are we going to leave our gods? For what? سَاحِرٍ Majnoon, for a mad poet. So far we have five titles. Kathab, magician, mad, poet, and in another ayah, they call them what? A kahin, a soothsayer. They combine five, the most evil titles you can think of people. The most evil, the ayah, magician, fortune teller, you know the whole thing. This was who? According to them, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Why? Because he was calling them to what? Tawheed. Their desires were not really cool with Tawheed. There was no room for Tawheed. So now they had to come up with stuff. So much so, that at the time of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa when someone became a Muslim, they would say, Saba'a. Saba'a Umar. You know what Saba'a mean? He deviated. And they called the Muslimin Deen al-Sabi'in, the religion of the deviants. And we were called Subat, Subat with the ta. They used to, the, the kuffar, whenever someone become a Muslim, they say, oh, he's just gone astray. He just went astray. Not that Allah guided him. They considered that they were in, in guidance, and when you become a Muslim, you go astray. Now, what am I aiming at here? You may be wondering, what are you giving us, a history lesson here? No, no, no. I'm trying to prove a point. Whenever the people of desires and innovations and, and uh, misguidance, whenever they are confronted with the truth and they intend on rejecting it, they create labels. They create names that will scare the people away. Be careful. These are such and such. Don't go there in order to mislead the common people and they will not find their way to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember this, this is their quality, this is their quality. This is a lesson which we learn. And what does that tell us concerning now? Why is this related to the topic? Because in our last discussion on the Sufis, we mentioned many of their deviant ways, many of them. And when they were confronted with the truth, they had to do the same way the Kuffar had done at the time of the Prophet Muhammad come up with a name, give them some false, false accusations, and keep the people away from them so that they can contain and keep their followers. They don't want to lose them. So all of a sudden we had Wahhabis. Wahhabi. You know the Wahhabis, right? They don't like the Wahhabis, man. 
They don't like the Wahhabis. And, you know, I personally, uh, I consider it one of the seven wonders of the world. In fact, I think it's the most wondrous of the seven wonders of the world. How can someone, like Sheikh Muhammad bin Abdul Wahhab, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, who found Muslims worshipping trees, stones, idols, the same way they were at the time of the Quraysh, before the Risala, he found them engaged in the same kind of shirk, he simply called them back to Tawheed. You read his books. Call Allah, wa call Rasul. Allah said, you know, Abuduni, worship me. Basic stuff. All of a sudden, you know, this is a Wahhabi and he's the creator of a sect and he's misguided. And if you read some of the Sufi sites, I mean, like I mentioned, you go to the Sufi sites, they have a special tab for Wahhabis. Ya akhi, read, read the lies and the fabrications. You won't believe. You won't believe. They accuse him of all kinds of things. Why? Because he was calling them back to Tawheed and they don't want Tawheed. Some of them are so ignorant, right, that they say Shaykh Lusab ibn Taymiyyah was a Wahhabi. And come on, Shaykh Lusab ibn Taymiyyah came, you know, 700 years ago. And Shaykh Muhammad ibn Rahab came, you know, and he was born in the year 1111. So how could he be a Wahhabi? How could Ibn Taymiyyah be a Wahhabi when Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab came way after him? And the name Wahhabi came because of Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab. Ironically, Abdul Wahhab, the bestower, is Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. What about Sufi? From Suf, from Wool. Look at the difference in the name. Even Allah made in the name a sign. I mean, they gave us the name. They gave us the name. And we say, listen, if Tawheed is Wahhabism, I'm a Wahhabi. Put me on Facebook. Put me on YouTube. Warn against me. And the Muslims who follow this way. We are Wahhabis. If you mean by Wahhabi, Someone who likes to worship Allah alone and associate none in worship with Him. We didn't come up with this name. But if this is what you call the people who are upon Tawheed, then let it be. Then let it be. It's better than being called a Sufi or anything else for this matter. We have no problems, man. And we will say it as it is. Now, as much as I wanted to give you a historical background on Shaykh al-Islam, Muhammad Abdul Wahhab, Rahimahullah, I realized two things. First, you can access this online. Actually, there's a book called The Wahhabi Myth. And everything you need to know about the da'wah and its origin and what happened to the Shaykh in his life, all this is available within clicks on the internet. So I'm not going to do that. That's easily accessible. Secondly, if I were to defend him from now until next year, this will make no difference to the people who will insist on following their desires. They will think I'm a crazy person, you know, obsessed with another crazy person. So they will not take my speech as something serious. Oh, just another Wahhabi. Of course he's going to defend the Sheikh. So I figured, why don't we address the issues on which we differ? You differed with the Sheikh Muhammad, Sheikh Muhammad Abdul Wahhab, we understand. What did you differ with him on? Let us present this and look at it from the Qur'an and the Sunnah perspective, then we can judge. If what is correct is with the Wahhabism, you better join and become a Wahhabi without the title. I'm not telling you go out there call yourself Wahhabi. Again, I'm not trying to call for a sect. I'm saying if this is the name you will give to the people of Tawheed, then Allah al-Musta'an. Allah al-Musta'an. Not that we want the names to be there, per se. If you don't accept, however, then Allah Azza wa will deal with each and every person on the Day of Judgment. And this is not a live statement that I said at the end. Those who are listening now and in the future, when we say that you're going to reject the da'wah of Tawheed and insist on some shirk, some grave worship, some other stuff, and then Allah will hold you accountable on the Day of Judgment, that's heavy. Very heavy. You don't want to meet Allah with, with your Tawheed, you know, uh, uh, inconsistent. With your Tawheed, defected. You don't want to do that. Now you can beat Allah with all kinds of sins. And we shouldn't. But assuming that was the case, if the Tawheed is sound, then we have a chance. But you can meet Allah with a lot of acts of worship based on shirk, they will be of no benefit on the day of judgment.